I first started fishing Studland in autumn 2019. My previous video documents five sessions and gives locational details for the mark I fished at Knoll Beach. The link in the top right hand corner takes you to that video. The rationale behind fishing there was to try and catch gilt head bream. Thinking that I might have left it a bit late, I decided to go back this year earlier in the summer. I also wanted to try and get a feel for the area in general and try other marks on the peninsula. This video covers three marks fished in two days in early July. The first is at Knoll Beach but further south than I fished last year. Having only fished it during the day and due to the shallow nature of the venue, I found that the bream and most other fish were caught at fairly long range. So here I'm clipping up a three hook bream rig with chino hooks, ragworm as bait and tipped with squid. This was my first outing with a new rod a Colmic Arcadia NX 4.4 meter. I bought the rod for short to medium range work, but here I'm testing its distance capabilities, throwing a 130 gram Tokana elongated bomb. There is little or no tidal pull in this part of Stubborn Bay, so a light beach rod is all you really need. And with southwesterly winds being from behind, 100 yards isn't that difficult. Today's quite a contrast to my previous sessions here. With the weather being dull and cloudy, there's hardly anyone else on the beach. Previously, the beach had been packed solid with holiday makers, at times making filming inappropriate. Having bought the new toy, I decided to play around with it for a while before setting up the second rod. I hadn't yet sourced a 6000 size reel to match this rod, so it's a bit overkill here. I'm still using my Pen Affinity 7000 with 20 pound braid. I'm happy with this setup, but no bites yet, so time to get the other rod out. The rig attached to the Gravel rod is a free hook clip down version again, but this time with size 4 Aberdeen hooks and 150 gram breakaway impact lead. I've baited this one up with lugworm, with the bottom snood being tipped with rag. The wind's picked up a bit and switched direction. It's no longer from directly from behind. It's off my right shoulder, so I'm walking a bit to my right before casting. The wind gets hold of braid more than it does with mono, and I want to try and avoid a big bow in the line. I need to try and keep as direct as possible to the lead. So casting a bit upwind and winding down as soon as possible helps. The weather's turned a bit nasty with some rain in the air. However, I'll get my first bite and it's on the gravel rod. It feels quite reasonable.
Speed made it feel bigger than it is, but it's a bream. Not a gilt head, but a black bream. First I've caught here. It's also foul hooked, again, which is probably why it felt a lot bigger. second bite is also on a gravel rod, so there must be something lucky about the south end lugworm. I normally catch all my bream on ragworm and squid, but today lugworm's doing the business. Not a bream, but a scaldy bass. Now, that's a bream, and it's sizeable, very dark in colour for a black bream, which are normally silver with black stripes. Noel Beach is very unpredictable, but one thing I do like about it is that you do get some sizeable fish. And here's another one. Strange thing is, it's on the lugworm. I was expecting ragworm to catch most of the fish. Another keeper, and another black bream, this time much lighter in colour than the previous one, and with hardly any discernible black stripes. And before I could rebait that rod, a bite on the Arcadia. That's more like it. No specimen, but at least the first fish I've caught on this rod is my target fish, a gilt head bream. I was beginning to wonder, but it looks like this is going to be a lucky rod after all.
had thought about packing up since the tide had started to ebb, just when I didn't. Normally, I find that the fish I catch here are over high water. The tide stays in for about four hours, ebbs a bit in the middle part of that, a bit like the double tide in Southampton water. That's the point at which I get most bites. I do get the odd fish outside those times, but rarely on the ebb. Others might have a different experience, especially those who fish here at night. I did fish it an hour or so down, but it wasn't any further action. Pretty pleased with the session though. I've christened a new rod, river goat head bream, and I've had four other bream, of which two of which are sizeable, and that lone scaldy bass. Middle Beach is to the south and adjacent to Knoll Beach. Having looked at it last year, I fancied fishing the wave cut platform or reef as anglers would call them, that separates Middle Beach from South Beach. It's a sandstone outcrop which is exposed at low tide, jutting out into fairly reedy water with bladder rack, eel grass and kelp present. I'm using the same gear as before and opting for the breakaway continental impact lids. I use bream rigs on both rods this time and I've brought along a greater variety of tipping baits. Ragwell, Joey mackerel for cutting up and some seafood baits which are in the best condition. I thought I'd quickly reveal my storage system for bream rigs. All of these rigs are made with crimps and chinu style hooks, mainly Kamazan B983s. I'll describe how I make these in the Hearst video. A link to that, if you're interested, is in the top right hand corner and in the description below this video. Although I've got rig wallets and EVA winders, I find this system a bit more convenient for the rigs that I use most often. So not surprisingly, I also store my place rigs this way, which I'll show in a future video. For most of these rigs, and most of my place rigs, I use imps to attach to lead of my choice. That means you can use whatever lead type you like and still clip down your rig efficiently. To attach my bream rigs to the swivel at the end of my leader, I tend to use clips which carp anglers use. These are fairly light and uh, I use a little bit of silicon tubing. This covers the clip and protects the knot. Cutting up my tipping baits is attracting the attention of plenty of sandflies. As mentioned in my previous video, these tend to be a particular nuisance at Knoll Beach. The mackerel is cut up into little chunks and the squid into small strips. Ragworms threaded up a size 6 B983. Then a chunk of mackerel is impaled on the end. The rig on this Gravel rod has a 150 gram breakaway continental impact lead and will be cast towards the moored boats. Got to be a bit careful with my footing as the tide is still on its way out and the bladder rack is quite slippery and a thick mass of weed does obscure some of the gullies. The Arcadia is set up with a slightly lighter rig and 130 gram weight. I'll be using this one for casting not quite so far out and further to the left. So both rods have similar rigs and each hook is baited up with ragworm. However, I am alternating the use of different types of tipping baits to see which one works best. As 
tide goes out, you can walk a little bit further on the sandstone platform to get a little bit of extra length on the cast. This is a lovely place to fish and you could quite easily be fooled into thinking it's quite peaceful. However, there are plenty of paddle boarders, rowers and canoeists to be aware of and these rock pools get the attention of families when the tide is right down low. I wasn't to know this when I set up but the rock pool to my right got plenty of tension during the day and even to the point when I had to stop filming because of a number of children that were trying to catch crabs and s small fish from this rock pool and they were pretty successful as well also catching some fairly large shrimps not a lot of action but it's only a matter of time before I get my first bites The arcadia was pulled right down and fortunately I connected with it. This feels like a fairly decent fish. Well worth waiting for and I was surprised it fell to a hook which was tipped with mackerel. I've not had wrasse on mackerel before. Stunning looking fish which put up a pretty good fight.
caught another one of those, again to the Arcadia, but it was a little bit smaller. Unfortunately, by this time, that rock pull I mentioned earlier got too much attention and I couldn't get the cameras out. I packed up when the tide started coming in, had lunch, then moved to the northern end of Stutland. My intention here is to fish what's called a training bank. This is a bank of rocks which juts out from the point which separates Shell Bay and Knoll Beach. It's an artificial bank which helps channel the tidal flow in and out of Pool Harbour. It's exposed at low water and marked by posts like those you find at the end of groins. You often see chartered boats drifting alongside it with boat anglers trying to catch the bass. I've walked from Shell Bay and set up some distance from the start of the training bank but I'm hoping it's still within casting range. The water is very shallow here until you get closer to the training bank. My first couple of casts fell a bit short and I was picking up little bits of weed as well which made it a bit annoying. I had a couple more casts but I found I wasn't really getting the distance and without any action I decided I would shift a little bit further back towards the Shell Bay. Same rigs as I used at Middle Beach but this time I stuck to the gravel rods. The water is gin clear but with the light starting to fade my chance of catching has increased. and I'm now able to cast a lot closer to the bank of rocks. The wind's changed direction and has picked up a bit from this morning. It's been very quiet but I'm still confident of catching. Not the specimen bass that those on the chartered boats hope to catch, but I'll settle for that.
it's right at the top of a second high tide and I've missed a couple of very sharp bites but then I managed to hit one no bigger than before but at least the long walk wasn't totally wasted After returning that fish, I spotted some terns diving in the water and a couple of white bait were washed up. So, time to change to feathers. I had a few casts, but no joy in that. I think the water is just far too shallow for mackerel. I did, however, have one more scaldy bass before having to pack up. So, another very enjoyable day with two contrasting sessions, and I really enjoyed catching that large wrass at Middle Beach. I'll definitely be back there again.